Hello, good evening, and uh, how are you doing? I believe that you are fine. I believe you are safe. I believe you are enjoying the grace of God. I believe you are focused on Jesus and you are not distracted by your present circumstance or what is happening around you. I believe that you are safe and sound and uh, you are taking very good care of yourself and trusting the Lord. God will bless you for joining me one more time. I bring you God to where this evening and uh, I believe that's going to be a great blessing unto you. I want to encourage you to invite somebody to join in this service and um, we are all going to be tremendously blessed by God's word tonight. God will bless you. Now please get seated. It's time for us to have fellowship in the word of God and I want you to get your Bibles, get your pens, get your 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 tablets, and let's get ready to have fellowship in the, the Word of God. And I want to encourage you to share. Click on the share button, and let's get people to also be blessed by this word I bring to us tonight. Amen. Now let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We ask for understanding. We ask, O oh God, that you grant unto us illumination. May we see wondrous things out of your word, and may this word change and transform us for good. Help me to speak it as you want me to, and may it help us, Lord, to walk this walk of faith here on earth. May we understand who we are in you. May we discover what you have given us, and may we align with you according to what you have said that you can do through us in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for a successful service in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you one more time for joining me. We'll go straight into the word of God. Today, we are looking at part two of the head and the body. The head and the body. The last time I was with you, I shared something with you from Colossians chapter 1, the verse number 18. Colossians 1.18, and it reads, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. We, I just preached from the first sentence, the part A, that says that he is the head of the church, the body. And I, I talked about two basic things. The first one I talked about was obedience. And I showed us how, as the body of Christ, we have to obey him as our head, just as the body or our body obeys the head. That the body does all it does by taking instruction and command from the head or our head. If you look at the coordination, the relationship, the trust between the hand and the head and the rest of the body, we are supposed to obey Christ out of love and trust just as our body, natural bodies, obey our head where we have the brain, the mind, and everything. We spoke about direction, spoke about insight, and we seeing, talking, and also hearing like Christ. Hallelujah. We also spoke about identity. We spoke about how the head doesn't have an identity. The body has no identity without the head. The head is the face and the face gives the body identity. The head without the body is, is, is it's, the body without the head has no identity. So the identity of the body does not come from the body. So the identity of the church, who is the body of Christ, does not come from the body, but from the head, from the face. So Jesus is the face of God. He is the face of the church. And for that matter, the identity of the believer is in Christ. So if you want to see who the believer is, look at Christ. And we saw that as he is, so are we in identity in our spirit, in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we looked at identity, then we also looked at obedience, as far as this spiritual truth that Jesus has become the head, or is the head of the church. 
He is your head. He is my head. He is the head of the local church and the head of the church universal, the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to listen to what we shared the last time again. It will help you to understand what you are sharing today. Today, we are going to look at maybe two more uh, uh, realities or spiritual truths from what the Bible says that Christ is the head of the church. He is the head of the church, the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So we are looking at the part two, and today we are looking at status. Status. Hallelujah. Or status. Not a whole sub status. But status as in uh, the condition, uh, uh, the, 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 the status quo, the who we are now, present condition of the church in relation to the head, uh, the present condition of the body in relation to the head. And it is very, very simple. Now, Christ is the head of the church. The church is the body of Christ. The head and the body are always present. Hallelujah. The head and the body are always present. Now, the, if the head is righteous, it means that the body is righteous. Very fundamental. The body is as righteous as the head. The head cannot be more righteous than the body. And the body cannot be less or more righteous than the head. Status or status. First John 4, 17. Because as he is, so are we in this world. The last part of First John chapter 14, chapter 17. Because as he is, so are we. As the head is, so are we. That is why we say that we pray the gospel to unveil the person of Jesus. And the believer in him. Because the believer's identity is, identity is in him. If you want to know the believer, look at Jesus. And yesterday we looked at how Jesus told Paul that, Paul, you are persecuting me. So in terms of status, we are talking about righteousness and perfection. We are talking about righteousness and perfection. And I want you to look at your body. Look at your head. And when we even say look at you, we are looking at your head and your body. They are, they are together. Hallelujah. So if the head is righteous, can you think that the body is not righteous? If the head is rich, the body is rich. If you see a rich man, will you say that the body is poor and his head is rich? Do you know any rich man? Do you see his head alone? To be rich and his body poor, or the body rich and the head poor, the status of the head affects the body. You use your head to study, you wrote an exam, you passed today, you are a doctor, you are an accountant, you are a seamstress, you are a welder, you are an artisan, whatever you are, you learned it with the head. Now, your head is not the doctor, the whole body is the doctor. Your head is not the accountant. Your whole body is the accountant. You are the accountant. What role did your your leg, your 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 some other part of your body play in writing the exams? You realize that you use your head, but you your status and who you are is not separated from the body. In the head, it's not separated from the body. Hallelujah. If the head is healthy, the body is healthy. Very simple. So you see, if you want to know where you are and who you are, you don't look at yourself. You look at how is Jesus, your present status. Your present status may be telling you that you are poor, you are barren, you have, you have a lot of needs, you are that you are that and you are not that. But hey, I came to tell you and I came to remind you that you have a status. This status, where will you upload it? Upload it. Go to status. As he is, so am I. He is righteous. 
That is why if you don't know Jesus, you don't know yourself. Because you are in him, he has to be unveiled, he has to be unraveled for you to see who you are. Because you are, you are hidden in him. We are hidden in him. So if you're looking for yourself, you have to see Jesus. For that is why if anybody wants to destroy you, they have to destroy your head. They have to destroy Christ first because you are hidden in him. Colossians 3, the verse number 1 and 2 says that for our, our lives, he is our life. We died and we rose with him and our lives are hidden in him. We are in him status. So if you want to know how rich you are, do you look at yourself? If you want to know what you have, if you want to know what you can do, you don't look at yourself. You look at the head. If the body is telling you a lie, if you want to see whether somebody is a man or a woman, you look at the, the face. The status. The status. Your status, your spiritual status. Don't let your physical status define you. Your spiritual reality is more real than your present reality. Because your spiritual reality can change your present reality. But your present reality cannot change your spiritual reality. Your spiritual reality is the reality that is in Christ. It is called the in Christ realities. The New Testament realities. Which is that Christ is not sick. So if the body is sick and the body can look at the head, that is not sick. It is only a matter of time. The healing will flow through the body, will flow through the mind and it will enter the body to flow through the head. If the body is discouraged, if men are saying there's a casting down, if the body is weak, the body looks at the head and receives strength. Christ is the head of the body. So why is the body tattered? Christ is not tattered. Why is the body not happy? Why is the body guilty? Christ is not guilty. Why is the body struggling? Christ is not struggling. If the head is at rest, the body is at rest. What I'm trying to say in connection to the status is that the perfection that is in the head, the head of the church, the head of the body must flow through the body, but the body must recognize that its holiness, its perfection, its righteousness is not from the body. Status. How are you? As he is, so am I. But you don't know as he is. Do you know about the present day ministry of Jesus? Do you know where he is? Do you know what he's doing? Do you know how he looks like? It is all written in the word. So this word is our family album. It is the perfect law of liberty, especially the epistles that shows us where Jesus is, who he is. You want to know who you are? Don't look at yourself. Don't look at the body. You want to know how holy you are? You want to know how you are on the inside? Unsemina, all the plans you have for your body is in your head. All the plans that God has for you is in the head, is in Christ. All the plans that you have for yourself is in the head. Same for God. Status And God said that, I know the plans that I think towards you. They are plans of good. They are, they are good thoughts to bring you to an expected end and to bring you to an end of hope. Our end is predetermined. The believer's end can be predicted. If you look at Jesus, it will end in peace. He died. He, was, he rose back to life. He went through difficulties. He overcame death. We have overcome death. The authority in the head, the exercise must, the body must exercise it. The head does not have more authority than the body. The, head, the authority of the head has been given to the body. That the body will exercise that authority. Who are you? 
your status, your prayer, and this status does not change. In the morning, in the afternoon, the new convert, the old convert, we are all perfect in the spirit, as holy and as righteous as Jesus is today. The Chinese believer, the Ghanaian believer, the Moravian believer, the Liberian believer, the Ghan believer, the Ever believer, the Akan believer, as he is, so are they in this world today. That is why your pastor must teach you who he is. Otherwise, Facebook, social media, your present circumstance, culture, and tradition will teach you who you are not. And you believe it. And you will live a limited life in this world. Know your status. Your status is in your head. Hallelujah. As he is, so are we. So that the body must look at who Jesus is and we will know who we are. What Jesus is before God, we are also before God. What Jesus is not before God, is God condemning Jesus? God is not condemning Jesus. He is not condemning your head. Why do you think he's condemning you? Is God mad at Jesus? God can you see, you can, God cannot be mad at the head and not be mad at the body because they are one. He in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, we are one spirit with him. We are one. If God is mad at the world, if God is mad at the believer, he's mad at Jesus. Because we are one. Hallelujah. What God, what Jesus is before God, the body is. Hallelujah. If the head is at rest, the body is at rest. The head is healthy, the body is healthy. The head is rich. The body is rich. The body will never know how rich it is until it knows how rich the head is. Hallelujah. The, the, the second one we are looking at today is location. Say location. It's not Jack, where are you? GPS, Ghana Post, wherever, location. Listen, location, talking about Christ is the head of the church. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is location. The head and the body are always together. They are inseparable. Where the head is, the body is. The head will never leave the body. When we say, when God says that, I will never leave you nor forsake you, this is what it means. I am your head. Where did you go? Have you ever gone somewhere without your head? Have you ever gone somewhere with your body without your head? That is how connected, that is how, that is how the church is, is in union with Christ. He is our head. That means that we have his presence always. The presence of God is with us. So we are in his presence. We live in his presence. We don't go into his presence. We, we, we are, he is always with us. In the church, in the washroom, at work, in our homes, in our cars, wherever we are, doing good or bad, he is with us. This is what you know. You go and ask Joseph. He said, God is with me. Hallelujah. Location, location, location. Where is, if you are looking for Jesus, look at, look, see, he is here. He is the head of of his church. I am his church. You are his church. Your church is his church. And the body of Christ is his body. We are looking for Jesus. He is on the, on the body. Find the church. You have found Christ. Persecute the church. You have persecuted Christ. Touch the believer. You have touched Jesus. Touch the body. You have touched the head. Where is Jesus? Location, location, location. Hebrews 13, 5. The, the last part said, um, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I, will, I don't know how to leave you. I don't know how to leave you. I am your head. I am with you. You are not like Moses. If your presence don't go with me, I will not go. If your presence don't go with me, I will not go. You, that is not your portion. That is another testament. In this New Testament, I will be in them. I will be with them. I am in them. They are in me. Ah, Jesus. 
What a glorious testament. He is with us. He is the head of the body. You are looking for the head, find where the body is. If you are looking for the body, find where the hair is. Where the head is, because they are always together. Hallelujah. God is with you. So I came to tell you that God is with you. Regardless of what you are going through, Isaiah chapter 43, the verse number 2 says that when you pass through the waters, I am with you. When your body is going through the water, make sure, always know that the head is with you. The body alone cannot go through the water. And, th and through the, the river, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. I am with you. I am with you. In the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, I am with you. I don't leave my, my children in fire. Fire cannot consume them. Why? Because of the head. I am with them. I am a consuming fire. Fire cannot consume them. Hallelujah. When you pass through the waters, I am with you. I am your head. I am with you. You don't need to feel me. You don't need to sense me. God is not a feeling. God is a spirit. We know, we know that he is with us. When you have money, he is with us. When there's no money, he is with us. When we are going through troubles, he is with us. When good times come, he is with us. When bad times come, he is with us. He is our head. He has never left us and cannot leave us. The head is always present with the body. Hallelujah. We pass through water. We walk through fire. We don't stand in it. We are walking through it. He is with us. I don't know what you are going through. But I always know that he is your head. And he has never left you. Hallelujah. We walk through fire. We don't stand in fire. We pass through waters. Isaiah 43, the verse number 2. Hallelujah. This is the revelation that Joseph, a man who lived under, under, uh, under the Old Testament, to say in Genesis chapter 4, 39, the verse number 2, the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. Listen, the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. Not because of what he had, but who was with him. Listen, the life of a man that is not determined by what he has. It is not about, about who you know, but who you are. It is not about, about what you have, but to whom you belong and who is with you. It is, if it is about whom you know, yes, but we know somebody that is superior God than anybody. Hallelujah. Why was Joseph successful? At this time, Joseph was a slave. Joseph was a slave. Joseph was a slave. Joseph was a slave in Potiphar's house. Bible said that he was a successful man for the Lord was with him. We are not trying to be successful. God is enough. We have him. We have success. He has never called anybody to be successful anyway. In any case, he's not called us to be successful. He's called us to be faithful. He's not called it. At the end of the day, he will be saying, well done, that good and faithful, not successful. Success is relative. You cannot measure it. Faithfulness, God measures faithfulness. Men measure success. If you are faithful, you are successful as far as God is concerned. Hallelujah. He was successful. Be quiet. God was with him. The mentality that he is the head and he is present with us always launches us and always positions us, always aligns us in his plan, in his will. And we don't struggle to be successful. We are successful because he is with us. This is a great mystery. Ephesians chapter 5, the verse number 31. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Great mystery. It is a great mystery. Location, location, location. He is with us. We are one. 
I and my father are one. I and the believer are one. The believer and I are one. The believer and my father are one. My father and I are one. My father and the believer are one. It is a mystery. I have ta 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 shagadaba o shahaya. We don't fear. He is with us. Regardless, he hasn't left us. Don't let your present circumstance lie to you. Don't even let a prophet, a false teacher, lie to you. God has never, he doesn't know how to forsake. Why? He forsook Jesus. My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? That was the last time God forsook any man or forsook men. When he forsook the man Jesus, he forsook all men in Christ. He has forsaken me before, and he will never forsake me for the, for the second time. That would be double Jopan. He cannot leave us. It is a great mystery. We are one with the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we are one with him, I came to tell you, let the body live for the head. Live for Christ. Please live for Christ. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 to 20, as I bring my exhortation to a close. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 to 20. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Because we are, we are one with him, he is the head and we are the body. It is one body. He is one with the body. He is with the church throughout. Because of that, 18. Flee sexual immorality. It is not because we fear punishment. It is not because we want blessings. It is not because of anything, but because we are one with the Lord. Listen, this is what David uh, Joseph did. He said, I will not sin. I, God forbid, I will not sin against my God. He knew that God is with him. Listen, the teaching of the gospel that reveals the mystical union between Christ and the church in that unity of love, that eternal unity of love makes the believer conscious of the presence of God regardless. Not when we are about to lead prayer, when we are in church, but he is with us. Because he is with us, we are joined together with the Lord. That is why we flee fornication. We are righteous. We flee it. The, the, the consciousness, are you carrying the body of God? Are you carrying God to go and sleep with a prostitute? That is what it means. You are carrying God. You and God are going to steal. You and God are going to gossip. You and God are going. God is with us. Listen, this consciousness creates in you a hatred for sin. I told you, be angry and sin not. One of the things that will help you to be angry at sin, so you do not sin, is that you know that God is with you. He is so we live for God because He is with us. Flee fornication. Everything that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. You are sinning against the body of Christ. You are sinning against the body of Christ. His own body is not his own body. We don't have body. This body is the body of Christ. You are that is why we sin against God when we commit sexual immorality. Paul said, Yeah, now all things are permissible, but not all things are expedient. We don't take advantage of this liberty to sin. The believer is set free from sin, not to sin. We are set free from sin, not for sin. And we know that we are joined together with the Lord. He is with us always. Location. Wherever you are, the Lord is with you. You are in his presence. Hallelujah. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Who is in you? Whom you have from God and you are not your own you are not your own he bought your body at a price for you are bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which is god your body is god so use that body to glorify the head let the body glorify the head by living right because he is the righteousness of god in christ jesus and we live right because he is with us you don't belong to you don't live for self. Live for him. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14. For the love of God compels us. 
because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. 15. For all died for all, for he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose, who died for them and rose again, that we will not live for self. How will we not live for self? We will not live for our body. We live for the head because we live from the head. Our life is from the head, from the source. He is our life. He is Jesus. Hallelujah. And he has placed all things under our feet. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. And he has put all things under his feet and has and gave him to be the head over all things, the church. Hallelujah. Which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all. Let me take Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 again. And he put all things under his feet. All things are under his feet. His feet. And what is his feet? His feet is the body. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Which is his body. The church is his body. That is why anybody that professes to be Christ or to belong to God, to be a Christian or a believer and lives a godly lifestyle is staining the name of Christ. You are staining the name of Christ if you profess to be a believer and you live in sin. You, only, you are only living in identity Christ. You are acting beside yourself and you don't know who is with you and who you are. Hallelujah. You have to start believing that all of his perfection and the delight and the joy that he brings to the father's heart, he has set to your account. Hallelujah. All things are under our feet. And Jesus pleasures the heart of God and we also pleasure the heart of God. Hallelujah. All things are under our feet. Demons, principalities, powers, Satan, death, fear, sickness, poverty. He has put all things under his feet. Christ has feet. His feet is the feet of the church. And all things are under his feet. Will you exercise the authority in the head on the things that are under the feet? Consciousness of your head, of, of your head and who he is, gives you power, gives you authority to exercise over everything that he has placed under your feet. Until you acknowledge him as your head and live as such and walk as such and know that he is with you, you will not be able to exercise that authority he has given you over all things that he has placed under your feet. Hallelujah. Put all things under our feet. He gave us power. This is talking about the authority of the believer. That unleashes the power of God that is in the believer. He gave us authority to use his power on all things under our feet. When we live in this consciousness, we walk and live in dominion, not over people, but over things and over Satan and all of his works that he has placed under our feet. Hallelujah. God, which bless you. So we have learned today that Jesus is the head of the body. And for that matter, we are together. So the body obeys the head. In all obedience, the, the head, the body is subject to the head and obeys the head. We've also learned that the body has identity from the head. The, the body without the head has no identity. Hallelujah. We've also learned about status. That if you want to know how righteous the body is, see how righteous the head is. The righteousness of the head is imputed on the body. The head cannot be more righteous than the body. The body is nanayao. The head is also nanayao. If the body is rich, the head is rich. If the body is poor, the head is poor. And until we know the status of Christ, we don't know the status of the church. Hallelujah. And we have finally looked at location that he is with us. The head can never and will never and is never separated from 
the body. He is with us, so we don't fear. And most importantly, we live for him because our body does not belong to us, but belongs to him. Hallelujah. God will bless you. I want you to leave the service and go and live with these realities and with this understanding that he is your head, submitting to him and living for him and living with joy that he is always with you and you are already successful in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you for joining me one more time. I want to encourage you that before you sign up, why don't you share and let somebody also be blessed by this. But before we end the service, I want to pray for you. May the Lord grant unto you understanding and insight into this truth. That we will understand that he is our head. That we shall live as such in the mighty name of Jesus. May we understand this truth. And may we walk in them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God rich, bless you for joining me. I want you to stay home. I want you to stay safe. Wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you're watching me from, whether you watch live or you watch later, always know that God loves you unconditionally. And he is thinking about you. And if you can stay your mind on him, he gives perfect peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will bless you. I want to invite you especially to the Western Family Church. Uh, 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 typical New Testament based church located in Accra. I just sent uh, the Tuta filling station at Pit Farm Junction. You may want to plan to visit us. We'll be happy to receive you into our Christian fellowship. God richly bless you. Our contact details are available on all our social media platforms and even on our website. Pay us a visit and we'll be more than happy to get interactive with you. We are standing by to receiving you. God bless you. Stay home, stay safe. Please don't panic. Do not panic. Do not panic. Do not fear. Walk in faith. Know who you are and enjoy the everlasting life God has given you in Jesus Christ. Amen. God will bless you. Until I come your way again next time. No. That God loves you unconditionally. Amen.